In this lecture, we begin to study the sorting problem. Sorting is the following basic problem. Your input is a sequence or array of n numbers, a1, a2, dot dot, dot an, and the desired output is the same sequence, however in sorted order. We can assume, for example, that we are sorting in increasing order. For example, if my input is this sequence on the slide, 5, 17, minus 9, and so on, well, the output would be the sequence minus 57, minus 9, 0, 5, and so on. Why do we care about sorting? Well, sorting is a very basic operation that shows up in countless other algorithms and scenarios. For example, when you look at your email, you often want to sort it by data, by date, or by sender, um, and so on. And all these operations have to be performed quickly um, by a clever algorithm, especially if you have lots and lots of email. Also, um, it turns out that sorting uh, plays uh, a crucial role in the theory of MP hardness, which uh, we shall see later. The tightest connections uh, in the theory um, utilize uh, some clever sorting algorithms. Okay, the first algorithm that we see for sorting is the bubble sort. Bubble sort uh, is a very simple algorithm. It only takes four lines of code, as you can see on the slide, and uh, it may be a good choice if you have to sort uh, a few items, like 100 or so on. We shall see later something much faster, but due to its simplicity, it is a good choice, again, if you have a small amount of data. Let's see how it works uh, with an example. Okay, so let's say that I have an array of n equals to four items, which are, for example, three, two, one, five. Okay, and I want to sort it in increasing order. So what happens is that I have two pointers, i and j. Pointer i starts from the end of the array, so a five. Okay, and pointer j starts at the beginning. And j gets increased as long as it's less than i. And every time we compare the element at position j with the next one, and if the one at position j is bigger, then we swap them. So for example, at the beginning, I have that the 3 is bigger than 2, so I swap it. So I have a sequence like 2, 3, 1, 5, at which point my j index is here, and I stayed here. Then again, I'm comparing uh, the one in position j with the one in position j plus 1. And again, I have to swap them. So now I obtain a 2, 1, 3, 5. j is here, and i is here. At this point, 3 is less than 5, so I do not perform any other swap. I'm done uh, with one iteration of the inner loop. Now I decrease i, so I go to 2, 1, 3, 5, where now i points to this last 3, and j again starts from the beginning. Again, I perform a swap. Let me continue the example here. I perform a swap, so I get 1, 2, 3, 5 where my i points at 3, and j now will point at 2. I do not perform any other swap. So I'm done again with uh, an iteration of the inner loop. So I can now <coughs> decrease i. To point at 2. 
uh, I only have uh, to consider one value for j, which is this one here. There is no swap to be made, and I'm done. The sequence is sorted. Okay, so it's called bubble because uh, these uh, pairwise swaps uh, roughly corresponds to bubble that uh, go up in the sequence. So we want to get a sense of why bubble sort works. Okay, so it's four lines of code. It's not hard to get an intuitive sense of why it works, but let's see how we can argue about it formally. So we want to make a claim that bubble sort sorts correctly. We want to break up the argument in a uh, uh, few claims, a uh, uh, few assertions that make us understand what is going on. And a good way of doing it for bubble sort is to proceed as follows. Let's consider that uh, we fix some particular choice of i. Okay. And let's now consider uh, the sequence a prime 1 dot dot a prime n, which is uh, the array at the start uh, of the inner loop. Okay. So at the end of the loop, what would be the content of a prime i? Well, if we think about these swaps, we realize that this entry a prime i will at the end contain the maximum of that array. Okay, it would be the maximum of the subarray from one to i. So it's a maximum over k less than i of a prime of k. And the positions which are uh, after i are not touched by the algorithm, by the way the algorithm is done. Since in the other loop uh, uh, the index i goes from n down to 1, the array in the end is sorted. Okay, so here is bubble sort here. Now we want to understand uh, how efficient this algorithm is. So we can count the number of steps, but it makes more sense now to count the number of comparisons so that we don't get bogged down in the details in how many uh, steps does a full iteration uh, take and so on. If we count comparisons, just comparisons, we get a cleaner analysis. Okay, so let's start. Let's start see what's going on. So when the value of i is equal to m minus one, then we can see that the inner loop performs m minus one comparisons. When the i is equal to m minus two, the inner loop will perform m minus two comparisons, and so on. And when i is equal to one, we only get one comparison. So the number of comparisons would be t of n equal to m minus 1 plus m minus 2 plus plus 1 and this quantity is clearly at most n square because you have n terms each at most n okay so the running time is at most n square and now we can ask ourselves is this thing tight okay is this also a lower bound is it true that t of n is also omega of n square And the answer is yes. In fact, this sum here has a closed form, which is this one here, n times n minus 1 over 2, which is a theta of n square. Okay, and now let's just spend a little bit of time to see uh, this equivalence here, this closed form for this sum. Okay, so we claim that one plus two plus three plus dot 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 plus n is equal to n times 
n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, that's what we need for the equation in the previous slide. And the proof uh, can be made very slick. Okay, so here is my sum. Here is how I can write this sum. For 1, I can put 1 dot. For 2, I can put 2 dots. For 3, I can put 3 dots. For 4, I can put 4 dots. For 5, I can put 5 dots. Okay, and so on all the way to n. So let's think that n is equal to 5 in this case. And then I'm going to make this into a rectangle. So I'm going to put the same dots starting from the bottom. So for 1, I'm going to put 1 square. For 2, I'm going to put 2 squares. For 3, I'm going to put 3 squares. For 4, I can put 4 squares. And for 5, I can put five squares. Okay, so this is a rectangle. Now, how many things do I have on this side? Well, it's five. This really was n in general. And on this length here, you have n plus one. Okay, and you obtain twice your sum. Okay, so this shows that twice 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n is equal to n times n plus 1, which is what we wanted to prove. We can now turn to the analysis of the memory, also known as space, of the algorithm. An important thing to keep in mind is that we never charge for the input itself. Okay, that's not fair. We only charge for the things that are stored in addition to the input itself. And the only other thing that we need in addition to the input for bubble sort are the indices i and j. And depending on how you implement the operation swap, you may need an extra element. So in terms of memory cells, for this, uh, it's only a constant number. So we can see that the space is equal to order 1. Okay. An interesting feature of bubble sort is that uh, the output of the algorithm is overwritten on the input. So we don't have uh, an additional array for uh, the output. Uh, and that allows us to have a, um, just a memory bound of constant, which is nice. <clears throat> OK, bubble sort takes quadratic time. OK, as we saw earlier, that's not ideal. We'd like something which gets much closer to n. So can we sort faster? We are now going to see two methods that can sort in linear time under some assumptions. They are very clever and they're used heavily. 